Hello, my name's Professor Peter Collignon. I'm based at Canberra Hospital, but part of ANU Medical School. I'm a professor of infectious diseases and microbiology. And I'm here today with our guest, which is Associate Professor Gunnar Kuripiai. And we're going to talk about the issue of smallpox. Um, Gunnar is at the John Curtin School of Medicine and he is a researcher uh, there in the position of associate professor looking at immunology and um, the viral immunology and immunopathogenesis in particular. And uh, this issue has arisen because uh, there's been a recent vote at the World Health Assembly on the issue of should all smallpox uh, be destroyed. And currently, as far as we're aware, only two places are still storing uh, smallpox and that's the Russians and the Americans uh, in the US and um, they've kept them uh, for reasons that we can talk about but essentially right. it's to do with biological warfare and um, but they had a moratorium to destroy that but they've we understand they've uh, not agreed to that so the stocks are continuing. Um, my own personal view is that we should destroy these stocks because I think they're there for germ warfare I think it's a risk that we don't have to continue, but there are opposing views from an academic point of view as well, and that's where Gunnar is going to come in. That's right, yeah. Thanks, Peter. Well, I um, certainly think that one day we, these stocks should be destroyed, but I do think that the reason why, um, especially uh, some American researchers have requested for a, um, an extension of time to ensure that they complete the work that they first set out to do, and that's really to, I, I think, you know, the, the fact that smallpox has been eradicated uh, would sound to someone as to why why would we ever want to hold on to these stocks. The, the idea is really to ensure that we are able to develop uh, new antivirals, which uh, there are two available, uh, but that's not quite there yet. It's not been approved by the FDA. Um, we also need uh, diagnostics, better diagnostic to diagnose smallpox, uh, because at the moment there are some tests available, but it's still not as good as what the researchers would want them to be, to be especially to be employed out in the field. Um, and the third is vaccines. So we've obviously managed to eradicate smallpox with a vaccine, but by today's standards, these vaccines that we utilize are considered to be quite dangerous in the sense that there's a high degree of adverse events. And so there's been a lot of research in the last decade or so on the generation of better, safer vaccines. But to date, we don't really have very good evidence that indicates that these vaccines are going to be effective. And all of this is, is I believe, it's to ensure that in case there is an outbreak through some means of the smallpox virus being released, uh, then at least we are prepared. And that, that's really the reason why the researchers in question want an extension of at least another three years. Yeah, look, I guess I have a contrary view. I guess my view is that the only reason the, or the predominant reason the Americans and Russians are keeping this is because they don't trust each other and somebody might release it as part of germ warfare. And it would be very effective because right. people who are born after about 1980, hardly any of them will have been vaccinated. So That's right. it's fairly devastating. However, I also take the view that um, we've got the genetic sequence. We've got a very similar vaccine virus um, that I think we could, you know, do experiments on. And... If and when we actually had an outbreak of smallpox because somebody's using it as germ warfare, I mean, relatively quickly we'd have the virus because it's released out there. I mean, you look at um, other viruses, the Americans in particular are very good at getting into developing countries and getting hold of it. So I can't actually see the argument for keeping it because if we did need the virus itself to do any work on, we'd probably have it within five or ten days of an outbreak because as soon as we know it, somebody would be there getting it. Now, we're not going to actually do, I would think, um, development on antivirals or a vaccine on the stocks we've got because the argument is there'll be a new strain that'll be genetically engineered that'll be different. So even if we had this worst case scenario happen because somebody, if you like, did the dirty, so speak, to the world, I would still think we'd actually have to go from that point rather than really necessarily any advantage in keeping the stocks because what we know I reckon we should be able to apply already and any new information would require the new virus which we won't know until it's actually out there. Yeah, no, uh, these are very fair points but I do think that I'm thinking in terms of what we really need to do in the next uh, few years and that is to get 
but antivirals because uh, if we do not have antivirals that we know for sure that will work, then it's, it's going to be a bit too late if there is an outbreak and the virus is out there. So we do need these viruses. And we do know that both the antivirals that are currently avail available have been shown to produce uh, drug-resistant strains of virus. So they're not good enough, and that's, that's really the reason why the FDA has not approved it. Uh, but it's been used in two uh, individuals who were vaccinated and who developed generalized vaccinia because of immunodeficiency. Well, my argument against that is that probably the drug we need most is for the vaccinia virus. So we've already got that. Nobody's going to destroy that. Why don't we make the drugs that work for that? Because that's more of a risk to people than is the thing. And the reality is if we had a germ warfare where this virus was released, there would not be enough virals to, antivirals to treat any, everybody anyway. The, the strategy would be the vaccine. The only problem with the vaccine is that it takes a while to work uh, and it's got side effects in the form of people that are um, you know, immunosuppressed. But right. that will be probably the case with any other um, you know, vaccine that's a live virus anyway, even if a new strain comes out. And our only hope, I think, is if we have an inactivated vaccine that is based on the genetic code, but we've already got the genetic code. So right. this argument about we can't develop a vaccine, I don't completely hold because we've got the genetic code. We could use that DNA to make some, some part of the antigen that people could react to in a way that wouldn't be unsafe. Because at the end of the day, the only people who got this virus are basically government almost spy agencies or people and I'm not sure they're really into making vaccines and drugs anyway. So holding on to the virus where the only people hold it is effectively, you know, the, the government with an intent to maybe release it or be paranoid, I don't think will achieve the ends that you suspect a three year moratorium would because the reality is we've already had this virus in store since you know 30 years if we haven't done it in 30 years i can't see how we're going to do it in three years because this will be an argument for keeping it forever right i agree and i, I think the point uh, one thing i should perhaps quickly say before i forget is that the drug resistant viruses are vaccinia the vaccine itself so it's not variola mm. so you know your suggestion about gener generating antivirals against vaccinia that's precisely the problem. Even vaccinia virus develops res resistance against these antivirals. So uh, the question is, you know, how effective are they going to be against variola? And the second point that I wanted to make is that, yes, we've had, uh, you know, 30 years uh, to research with variola. And I'm actually fully um, aware of the work that's going on and I was actually involved in a uh, review of the non-variola, uh, sorry, non-human -pr uh, primate model of variola virus infection in 2010 for the CDC, which, uh, and the committee wrote up a report for the Institute of Medicine in the USA. And I know that they've actually fine-tuned um, non-human primate model to study smallpox. And, uh, and I think that three years would really help them finish off the studies with pathogenesis, vaccine, and antivirals. And that's why I think that three years will be great if there's an extension. Well, I guess my own view is if in three years it definitely was going to be destroyed, this is to some degree an academic exercise. But the problem is everybody gets the impression that this is never going to happen. And I think it's the motivation. I mean, we've eradicated a disease from humanity. That's right. The only viruses stored are in two people, by two you know, organisations that one could argue are looking at harm to others by keeping it. Right. So I'm not sure their motivation is necessarily the good of mankind. And the reality is when this has been stored before, there has been an, a release of this virus and somebody was killed. Now, right. you can argue, well, that will never happen again. But I also think if it's kept so tightly in sort of effectively a military security, that is hardly the avenue where you're going to get a lot of research and development done. And I still make the point that the main virus that's a danger to people is in fact perversely the vaccine virus and that's really what we should actually aim to make better antiviral drugs because we do get uh, researchers you know it's used in researchers at ANU and elsewhere right. and if you if some of them get virus that goes out of control that's what we need the drug for and I presume that whatever drug we develop for that if it was better would also probably work for smallpox right and resistance is a problem 
you know, for but, all bacteria and viruses, right. you know, it's almost inevitable. So I think we just have to accept that's going to happen to whatever drug we have, and we just have to have in a position to develop new drugs, or better still, vaccines that are less dangerous than the current one we've got by using the genetic code we've already got. Right. Sure. Uh, very good points. Uh, but one thing I should say that, you know, I think we, we get into a circular argument when we say that, well, I mean, wait, what's the point of keeping the virus? We should destroy it when, you know, on the other hand, we have the genetic code and we can actually make the virus from scratch. So it becomes, on the one hand, a circular argument, but on the other hand, a moot point. Well, if the stocks are destroyed, someone can actually make these, this virus. Obviously, they need, you know, a very high-tech lab, but theoretically, it's possible to make this virus. I mean, I'm not aware of anyone actually having attempted because one can't uh, because there is a ban on such practice. But um, at the same time, you know, who is to say that it may not be attempted? But if that's theoretically so easy, again, what's the point of keeping the virus? I mean, I, 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 fundamentally, I believe the only reason for keeping the virus is because somebody wants to use it for germ welfare. And so I think that risk far outweighs the small benefits we've got for keeping it for another few years because I think we'll just kick the ball down the road each time. It'll always be, oh, we're almost on an edge of another breakthrough, so we'll never get rid of the virus. And eventually, I reckon somebody will, you know, have a bad hair day and uh, be worried about other countries and release it. And I think we're all better off if this virus is dead and buried. Yes. Uh, well, I guess for all intents and purposes, it is dead and buried, but, but I do think that we should we should have at least another three years of work so that I think we are better prepared. Um, and that, that's, that's my honest belief. And I do know of some of these people who actually work with variola virus in the U.S. and they are very decent scientists, uh, highly respected. And um, I don't think, you know, the, their intentions are, you know, to someday use the virus for uh, yeah, but my, my worry about that, it's not the people working on the virus that make that decision. It's, it's people much higher up the food chain who make right. that decision and just use the expertise and work that's been done by others. Mm. I mean, I guess the other thing we haven't mentioned yet is ANU has had a lot to do with smallpox eradication. Oh, absolutely, yes. Frank Fenner yes. was on the WHO you know, group that was involved mm. in both all the work to get rid of it and that's also right. um, right. finally declare that it was eradicated from that's people. Right. So Yeah, no, he was indeed the chairman of the commission that uh, declared the um, smallpox virus eradicated. And in fact, if you read uh, media reports, uh, a lot of the American media tends to report someone else mm. as having been the chair of this um, commission, but it was really Frank Fenner. And, and a lot of his, you know, the reason why he got involved, or at least part of the reason why he got involved with the commission was a lot to do with uh, his work with mousepox, which is a mouse model of smallpox. It's not the same virus. They're closely related. But the disease is very similar to smallpox. So Frank was able to use you know, his knowledge from that mousepox model uh, and actually extended it to the pathogenesis of smallpox. And in fact, his paper, which is, it's a classic, um, and so people will around recognize Frank as one of these big uh, names in smallpox and pox virus research. So I guess, I mean, from my point of view of our debate about smallpox, um, yeah. we're both in the same conclusion. We both think it should be destroyed. Yes. Our only difference is you think we should give them another three years and I think we should do it now. <laughs> That's right. Hey, yeah, three years is, it's not a very long time. So, you know, in, uh, and I, in, if it's going to do some good, um, then three years should be given. I suspect with the way governments move, we'll have about three years anyway. <laughs>